have time to start new debates, so we're going to move to member statement. Now recognize the member for Markham Unionville. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Two years ago, I introduced a bill to recognize May 10th in each year as Lupus Awareness Day in Ontario, which later came into force. This is our second year observing this important day. This May 10th, I welcomed 21 members of Lupus Ontario to Queen's Park. For over 40 years, this amazing group has been providing education, awareness, efficacy, and research to support those with lupus to live longer, healthier, and better lives. It is exciting to learn that this year, the group launched the Light of Lupus for campaign where 43 landmarks across Ontario were illuminated in purple on May 10th. Lupus is a chronic autoimmune disease where the body attacks itself, causing inflammation and pain. It can also damage any organ or tissue. Currently, without a cure, one in every 1,000 Canadians is affected by this disease. Lupus affects more than just one person in the disease, but it also impacts their family, friends, and work colleagues. By raising awareness of the disease, we also save lives. I would therefore like to commend Lupus Ontario on the important work they are doing in our province and encourage Ontario. Thank you. Next member's statement, the member for Oshawa. At the Backdoor Mission, Project Mission United brings health care and service agencies under one roof to help those who are unhoused and struggling. People who come to the mission need very real help and are at different stages of healing or hurting. The work done there is tremendous and compassionate, and it helps people on their journey to get the help they need or to have support that they've never found before. I invited the Minister for Mental Health and Addictions to Oshawa, and I want to thank him for coming. I appreciate immeasurably that he came for hours to tour the mission, meet with and learn from frontline service providers and the medical team there. He saw the hub model in action. What he didn't see and couldn't have seen was what we don't have. We don't have a system that will help people without financial means get from hurting through recovery to stability. 18 months is the wait list for a bed for treatment. The Minister of Mental Health and Addiction saw the value in the work done at the acute care clinic that treats folks on site so they don't have to go to emergency rooms. But, Speaker, in our province, the Ministry for Mental Health can't pay for the health needs, and the doctors who serve so many homeless people without ID can't be paid salary so they can continue to provide street wound care and addiction support, and that doesn't make sense. We heard from victim services that survivors often have no affordable and supportive living opportunities because it doesn't exist and they're forced back into danger. CMHA Durham told us they have housing units available but don't have the subsidy. So we could have housing for more people in need, but agencies can't afford it. At Mission United, they have figured out how to work together to best support people living in poverty and on the streets. I wish this Premier would acknowledge the crisis we're facing and choose to heal and help our communities so people wouldn't have to live on the streets and in pain. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Renfrew, Nipissing, Pembroke. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, as everyone knows, June is Seniors Month. It's our annual opportunity to dedicate a month to that group of citizens that has reached the point in life where they can look back with a sense of pride on the many things they have accomplished. But let's be clear, the seniors of today aren't just looking back, they're looking forward. Our seniors, particularly those who still enjoy good health, are more active than any of the previous generations. Seniors are not sitting back with their feet up. They're continuously engaging in and around their communities in ways that not only benefit themselves socially, but also provide benefits to their communities. I know when I do voluntary service awards every year, the majority of those receiving those awards are, in fact, seniors who, after contributing so much through their working lives, continue to be the driving forces in so many of our institutions, organizations, and service clubs. I dare say that most of the service club, the clubs that exist in our communities could not operate or contribute the way they do without the involvement of our seniors. I encourage everyone to visit one of the senior active living centres in their ridings in the month of June and see what amazing things are taking place there to ensure that our seniors continue to be vital and engaged. In the month of June, as summer approaches, be sure not to just honour our seniors for what they have done for us, but celebrate them and celebrate with them and be grateful for the gift that they are. 
The beautiful community of Gogama is located across the street from a new gold mine. In 2020, the Premier came to the groundbreaking ceremony. He said, and I quote, this gold mine will bring economic prosperity and change lives in Gogama. I agree, Speaker. But for this to happen, the people need a place to live and business a place to set up shop. The good news is there are plenty of empty lots and empty homes located on paved roads with streetlights, hydro, telephone, internet, water, sewage, everything a modern family or business needs. The bad news? None of them are available for sale or rent. You know who owns them all, Speaker? The government of Ontario, or as the locals call them, the worst slumlord in this province. Since 2020, my office has been relentless in trying to motivate this government to put them up for sale or at least to rent them out. I wrote and delivered letters to the Premier, to the Minister of Finance, Government and Consumer Services, Infrastructure, Natural Resources and Forests, and the answer for the last three years has been crickets. While over a dozen properties are left to rot in Gogama, they, like many other in our province are facing a housing crisis. Gogama is missing out on the prosperity the pro Premier promised. The people of Northern Ontario are tired of waiting. This government needs to put these homes and lots up for sale right now. Thank you. Next member statement, the member for Glenbrook, Flambrook. Thank you and good morning, Madam Speaker. The return of summer also means the return of farmers markets right across Ontario. Visiting the market is a tradition that families across the province look forward to each and every year. In my riding of Flamborough Glanbrook, the Water Down Farmers Market kicked off the season last weekend with an exciting opening day featuring live entertainment and activities for children. The market will run from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday until October 14th, with over 20 vendors offering everything from fresh fruit and vegetables to baked goods, meat, wine and fresh cut flowers. The market is made possible by the dedicated volunteers who help with setup and teardown every week and ensure the market is accessible to all by helping customers carry heavy purchases to their vehicles. This year will be the market's 10th season since it reopened in its current location at the Waterdown Legion. Farmers markets are an excellent opportunity for Ontarians to support our local farmers, mm -hmm. growers and producers who work hard every season to put food on our tables. The province's agri-food sector is vital to our food security. It employs over thousands of people and contributes billions to the economy. I encourage everyone to visit a farmer's market this summer to support local agriculture and enjoy some fresh and delicious Ontario-grown produce. Thank you. Thank you. Next member statement, member for Niagara Falls. Thank you. Last week, the Ontario Health Coalition organized a referendum on the privatization of our publicly funded, publicly delivered health care. People in my community came out to vote at the Douglas Moore Urgent Care in Fort Erie which the community is fighting to save, at the GNGH in Niagara Falls and at the St. David's Fire Hall in Niagara Lake to send a clear message to the Premier. The people of Niagara do not want privatized health care. Right. We have a real crisis in our health care system, from wait times to staffing shortages to emergency room closures. This government could choose to address this crisis, but instead they're choosing to underfund public health care by $21 billion. That's with a B while well, they pursue an agenda of privatization. The legislature will recess for summer in less than two weeks. Instead of spending the necessary time to fix these problems, the Premier is choosing to end the session while our health care system falls deeper into crisis. As a province, we can choose to either follow the Premier's plan of unequal care, longer wait times and no transparency, or we can choose to repeal Bill 124, repeal Bill 60, invest in publicly funded, publicly delivered health care, and finally end the disastrous system of private for-profit care and long-term care in the province of Ontario. I want to thank the volunteers in Niagara for organizing the vote the people who came out to make their voices heard, and I'm looking forward to learning the results later today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next member statement, the uh, member for Ajax. I rise today to highlight the outstanding work being carried out by the Durham Community Action Group in our community. 
Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government is dedicated to providing support to address the challenges faced by our residents, particularly around the rising cost of living. I'm thrilled to announce that the Durham Community Action Group has a remarkable team headed by Ms. Gloria Small and has been granted $95,000 from the Resilience Communities Fund. This grant will be utilized over a period of 24 months to aid in their recovery and to strengthen the community programs being offered. Their primary focus will be on addressing mental health needs among seniors, especially with black seniors in Durham. Gloria Small Clark and her team and countless other community leaders who selflessly devote themselves to supporting our communities in Durham Region deserve our utmost recognition and appreciation. Their commitment to providing vital services and programs is truly commendable. As the representative of Ajax, I feel an immense sense of pride knowing that organizations at the Durham, Action Commu Durham Community Action Group are working tirelessly to uplift our community. Together we can build a stronger, more resilient community where no one has to face securities or mental health challenges alone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Guelph. Thank you, Speaker. I want you to know I've had far too many gut-wrenching meetings with parents on the wait list for the Ontario Autism Program. We know that under this government's watch, the number of children with autism waiting to receive core services have more than doubled to over 60,000 children. These numbers, Speaker, have real-world consequences for children and families. One mother last week sat in my office in tears, worried about losing her home to finance care for her child. She's had to pay out of pocket for services, calling every week trying to figure out where her child is on the wait list. There's no answer, and her daughter is becoming increasingly violent. The situation is so severe that the fi family finally secured urgent response service funding. But it's a 12-week Band-Aid, and the funding is coming to an end. So I want members to imagine the frustration and fear about what comes next, the unimaginable choice of caring for your child or a roof over your head. 60,000 children in this province, their parents are facing similar choices. We can do better. We must do better. These kids cannot wait any longer. They need a needs-based program that works for everyone, regardless of age. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am proud to raise today and celebrate a remarkable entrepreneur and a change maker in Scarborough, Sam Ibrahim. Born and raised in Scarborough, Sam's roots trace back to Egypt, where his parents immigrated to Canada in the 80s. It was in the neighborhoods of Scarborough Sam found his inspiration and drive to reach for the stars. At the age of 26, Sam founded the Arrow Group of Companies, which has grown to become one of Canada's largest private corporations. Sam is also the co-founder of Scarborough very own basketball team, the Scarborough Shooting Stars. Sam's contribution extends far beyond the basketball courts. It is Sam's philanthropic endeavors and his love for Scarborough that truly <coughs> set him apart. It came as no surprise when Sam announced his plan to invest $25 million in the heart of Scarborough to build the Sam Ibrahim Center for Inclusive Excellence in Entrepreneurship innovation and leadership at the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. This center will provide promising entrepreneurs with resources and connection to make their ideas a reality. Today, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Sam Ibrahim for his excep exceptional leadership, his unwavering dedication and commitment to giving back to Scarborough. <coughs> Sam, you are and truly an inspiration to next generation to dream big. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you very much, Speaker. Good morning. As we come to the conclusion of Polish Heritage Month, I'd like to acknowledge the 550th anniversary of the birthday of Polish mathematician and astronomer Nicholas Copernicus, Mikołaj Kopernik. Often thought of as the father of modern astronomy, 
Copernicus would forever change our understanding of the cosmos, challenging long-held beliefs and ushering in a new era of scientific thought. During his time, the prevailing belief was that the Earth was at the center of the universe. But through his meticulous observations and bold intellect, he unveiled a revolutionary heliocentric model in 1543 that would send shockwaves throughout the scientific world. Supported by astronomical calculations, he proposed that the Sun, not the Earth, is at the center of the solar system and that its planets revolve around it in circular orbits. He inspired future generations of astronomers, scientists, and philosophers. Mr. Speaker, Copernicus is an inspiration to the 600,000 people of Polish heritage here in Ontario. And today we have the honor of having the Canadian Polish Congress, the Polish Canadian Business and Professional Association of Windsor, and the Władysław Raymond Foundation here at Queen's Park hosting a reception to commemorate the life and contributions of Nicholas Copernicus right after question period in room 228. I want to thank the organizers for commemorating this amazing day and and wonderful month and invite all members and staff to join us as we conclude Polish Heritage Month in Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.